boom, it's Tactical Carl and Jamika the lawyer going over the law and law enforcement. What are some reasons a person can be pulled over? Well, you can be pulled over almost anything, violating any traffic law. So let's just say your headlights out. Let's say you didn't signal within a hundred within a hundred feet of turning. So let's say turn, turn, signal on, boom, you get over. That's also a reason to pull somebody over. If you have something hanging from your mirror, you can be pulled over for that. It's called obstruction of view. Okay. Um, you could be pulled over for your car is too loud, the exhaust, different things like that. You could be pulled over for having your swingers coming on down 610 and MLK Boulevard if they're longer than your mirror. Okay. Good. Good, good to know. Mm -hmm. um, what about, what are some things that um, a person has to do when they do get stopped? So when you get stopped, uh, a, a police officer legally and justifiably pull you over on that traffic stop, you have to provide them with your driver's license. You have to provide them with your insurance. From there, you can literally be like, here go my driver's license, here go my insurance, that's it, I'm done talking. Does Is that problematic? Absolutely, that's problematic. So now it's like, oh, okay, I'm just trying to pull you over, write my little ticket, and go ahead about my business and give you a verbal warning. But if you want to just not say anything and go from there, you have every right, legal right to do that. Okay. What are some things that you can be arrested for just for traffic stops? So in the state of Texas, the only thing that you cannot be arrested for is open container and speeding. So anything else for running a stop sign is arrestable offense. And some smaller, some smaller counties and cities, they will like Pasadena, Pasadena will arrest you for running a red light. Hmm. So it's basically up to your discretion on what you guys arrest for? Absolutely. So it's up to what you arrest for, where you at, like how busy they are. All of these things can come and play with your arrest at that moment. Okay. All right. I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Say, for instance, you are acting like you're officer friendly. Okay. And you're like, hey, Jamika, tell me where the weed is and I won't arrest you. Is that legal if you actually do find weed and arrest me? Absolutely, but guess what? And I hear in Texas and Harris County, people ain't arresting nobody for weed because the, the, the nice judges and DA, they don't like to take it unless it's over four ounces. And even even then, I've, I've literally heard where they go, if it ain't 100 pounds, then I don't want it. Okay, all right. So how are you guys getting inside of cars using weed as probable cause since weed and hemp kind of like smell like the same thing and hemp is legal now? Well, because there's no distinction between the two smells, so it's still illegal to have the odor of marijuana inside of a vehicle. It's still illegal. Even if it becomes legal, you still can't ride down the street smoking weed. It's just like alcohol. Alcohol is legal, but if I smell alcohol coming from the vehicle, coming from your breath, coming from your person, now that gives me probable cause to start conducting a DWI investigation. Okay. So you're still going to yeah, search the car? Absolutely. Even with him being legal yes even looking at him and you might see what looks like marijuana in the car and it might just be him absolutely okay all right well and I, i'm just playing the super superhero cop that's <laughs> trying to put everybody in jail all right and so there is no legal definition for probable cause but a set of facts and circumstances that a reasonable person a reasonable prudent person will believe that a crime will be committed or has been committed so Dude coming from a store just got robbed three o'clock in the morning. He's wearing a black shirt, blue pants, and green Nikes. And he's walking from the area where a crime has been committed. And you have probable cause or reasonable suspicion now to make contact with him to stop him and ask him questions. And while asking him questions, knowing that a robbery has taken place, now for officer safety and the safety of the public, you pat him down and you find a gun on him. And He's a felon. Now, we just got the felon in possession. He wasn't the dude who just robbed the $7.99 store off of 1960, but you had probable cause to talk to him right. at that moment. Right, okay.